up everyone? I'm Female Otaku and you know what this review is going to be about, okay? It's going to be about me just fangirling on how epic this anime is and that anime is Gangsta, episode 4 to be exact. So, let's get down to it, shall we? With this episode of Gangsta, we got to learn so much more stuff. Oh my gosh, it's amazing what Gangsta can do for... Not all the time will it have action. Of course, towards the end, it did have some action. But, you know, we're going to get more of that in the next episode. But anyway, is that they can still keep you intrigued with all the information that they give you. Why? Because our leads are so interesting, okay? They're so different from anything else we've ever seen before. So whatever little information we get, we crave for more. And that's what makes Gangsta a genius. That's what still keeps us intrigued when there is no action, okay? When we get bits of information about their past, we still love it. Gangsta, you're awesome! <laughs> Yo! Okay! So, back with this episode. So, um, oh, actually, if you guys didn't know, I was reading the manga and I finished the first volume and then I was all like, I should stop. But I won't. So I read two more chapters after that. So the last ch chapter I read was chapter seven. And so uh, they, how they ad adapt from the manga to the anime is pretty good. Really good. Like they do switch chapters around, but it's only to make more sense for anime watchers only. So that's very smart. And they did this pretty well. So I actually want to talk about Alex for a second. She was only in this episode once. Okay. So she was considering leaving, but then the image of Barry popped up into her mind and she remembered that she really doesn't want to go back to being a prostitute and she really likes being over there with Warwick and Nick. So, what's she gonna do? And then we find out, oh, there was a woman who hung out with Nick and Warwick at some point, but she got severely injured. Hint, hint, that woman who was in the previous episode that Nick was seemed pretty depressed and down about and you saw Alex peek and saw the door slowly close. Yeah, that woman. Okay, I believe her name is Veronica. So, in the beginning we have Woodick and Nick there over at the police station being questioned and stuff for these disembodied, uh, like, bodies and stuff. There's, I think there was about six bodies who were all chopped up and stuff, and they were chopped up by Katana. So, you know, they're all looking at Nick, and uh, Nick, he's not really doing too much, but Woodick, he has an amazing memory. And I'm just so like, my boy, I love Woodick so much. Oh, he's the man, he's the man. Okay, so we also get to learn more about Nick and Woodick's past. And so it turns out Nick was Woodick's bodyguard at some point. And I actually thought Nick became deaf after some sort of maybe battle or thing that he was in, but it seems like he's always been deaf. I could be wrong since, you know, he is able to articulate words and to know to be able to do that, you have to at least hear them first. So I don't know, maybe he was deaf. He became deaf at a young age or maybe he's always been deaf. I don't know. I kind of want to learn more about that. I don't know if we, if we ever will, but that's kind of something I want to know. So anyway, we found out that Warwick, as I, I kind of already could tell, he was once a pretty rich kid. Okay. I don't know what their family business was, but they were pretty rich and he'd be finishing lessons like that, like Ak Akashi Seijiro style. <laughs> okay. He, he'd, he'd read everything and be like, yeah, I already know this lesson. You can go home now. Bye. So that's my boy. And we saw their relationship forming. I don't understand what's going on with Warwick and his parents as a child. He's upset with them for some reason. And he at first thinks it's kind of bad that he has a deaf bodyguard. I don't really know. I want to learn more information about the relationship of Warwick and his parents. Okay. And uh, so, the Twilight. Now, we get to meet this Twilight that just so happens to be an A0. And that, my friend, is a yo moment! Oh my gosh, bro! You saw the smile on both of their faces, okay? When you saw another Twilight come in, came in, okay? Which would be Nick. When you saw that kid fighting, you know, the Cristiano uh, Mafia, and then Nick came in, they, they, they all stood, they stood at each other, okay? They knew what they had to do. They had to show each other the tags, all right? They're both A zero. Yo! Oh, man. That's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so good. Oh, so 
so good, man. Uh, before I end this review, I have to say, the violence that we're getting this summer season, oh, it's so good. It is so good. And to that, I'd like to say, screw you, Tokyo Ghoul. Screw you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, you saw the beheading with that one guy. Ah, oh, man, I swear, that was more violent than Overlord yesterday. You just saw... That was great. And then you saw the bullet go through that one guy's head because of Wardick. And then you saw Wardick put the gun in that dude's mouth. I was like, yo! Oh, no, no. When I saw Wardick put the gun in that dude's mouth, I was like, yes, yes, yes. I'm not lying. I was like, yeah. I got a little crazy there because I was so into the violence, bruh. Oh, gangsta, 10 out of 10. As always, I love it. Can't get enough. Cannot get enough. But catch me later as we tone it down on the violence as I review Ore Managatari. I'm a female otaku. Sayonara.